This is News 25 with Deanna O'Donnell. News 25, local news you can count on. News is brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law. Give them a call, 727-9900. News is also brought to you by Desert View Hospital. You can count on us. Welcome to News 25 here on KPVM TV and Ace Country Radio. Today is Tuesday, November 15th. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. Well, new photos have been released of a subject wanted in connection to a burglary and robbery that occurred over the weekend here in Pahrump. Nye County Sheriff's Office detectives are seeking the public's help in identifying a suspect responsible for two crimes this past weekend here in Pahrump. The Sheriff's Office is investigating a burglary that occurred on November 11th at approximately 2 a.m. at the Rebel Gas Station on the corner of Basin Avenue and Highway 160. Police say two young males stole numerous disposable vapes. One came into the store and the other was a lookout. On November 13th at approximately midnight, a male who appeared to be the same male from the burglary at the Rebel entered the winery supermarket located on Winery Road and Highway 160. That male reportedly committed a robbery on the clerk using a handgun and took disposable vapes. These are the newest photographs released by the Nye County Sheriff's Office. Anyone who can assist in identifying this male, please contact the Nye County Sheriff's Office via social media. You can also email sheriff at co.nye.nv.us or give them a call, 775-751-7000. You can remain anonymous. Well, it's all of our fears come true. A man who police say was offering an unknown schoolgirl a ride was arrested by police in a stolen vehicle with drugs and stolen items. The Nye County Sheriff's Office have reported that they have arrested an individual by the name of Jonathan Hines for an alleged one count of possession of stolen property, one count of use possession of drug paraphernalia, one count of possession burglary of tools, obtaining possession of credit card, debit card, without consent, possession of stolen property, and possession of a controlled substance. On November 8, 2022, deputies were dispatched to a suspicious situation in the area of Thousand Air and Paula in Pahrump. The caller stated that her sixth grade daughter was walking to the bus stop in the area and was approached by an unknown white male in a white Toyota Tundra. The man in the truck asked if they knew each other and offered her a ride. Upon arrival, the deputy spotted the truck. The vehicle was occupied by a white male, so he stopped to investigate. The male provided his California identification card, which identified him as Jonathan Hines. After running the plates, it was discovered that the truck was reported stolen. The deputy immediately took Hines into custody. As the deputy was placing him in the rear seat, Hines admitted that there was dope in the truck, specifically meth. The deputy searched the truck and found a clear glass pipe used to smoke methamphetamines and other narcotics. The search also produced another stolen license plate, over two ounces of marijuana, and tools. The deputy removed Hines from the rear of his vehicle and told him he was under arrest for possession of a stolen vehicle. The deputy then conducted a search of his person and located two credit cards that did not belong to him. Hines was taken into custody without further incident. And Nye County residents can apply for the Nevada Home at Last program very soon. The Nevada Rural Housing Authority is working to launch a brand new program geared towards assisting Nye County residents in purchasing a home. The program is called the Buy in Nye program. The proposal was presented to the BOCC on November 1st, 2022. Director of Home Ownership Programs for the NRHA, Diane Arvizo, explains why the program is so important to Nye County. The mission of Nevada Rural Housing Authority is to promote, provide, and finance affordable housing opportunities for all rural Nevadans. The American Rescue Plan comes at the perfect time. We can put Nye County's $400,000 of Rescue Plan funding to work right away to bridge the widening gaps for your local residents impacted the most. By partnering with Nevada Rural Housing Authority, we can use our existing plug and play program structure to put a program in place immediately. And our program structure supports the financing of manufactured homes converted to rural property, an important component to Nye County's affordable housing ecosystem. The Buy and Nye Home Ownership Program will have exclusive access to the mortgage tax credit program offered through Nevada Rural Housing. This would create a unique benefit to Nye County residents that cannot be duplicated anywhere else. With $400,000, a person could build one home, or the county working with Nevada Rural Housing could help many households 
by providing exclusive access to more affordable home financing with down payment assistance and reduced mortgage rates. The program would provide a 30 year fixed rate first mortgage to the home buyer. It, the second would be the down payment assistance. It's a silent second, no assistance. If during the term of the ARPA program, that person refinanced or sold a home, we could recycle the repaid down payment assistance to help one more family with that money. We will be serving households that earn up to 300% of federal poverty guidelines. Note the slide has an error of 130%, that should be 300%. This is for first time home buyers and that would be following the IRS's three year rule of not having any evidence of homeownership in the previous three years. All buyers would be required to have a 640 minimum credit score and if for a manufactured home, it would be a 680 credit score. This is obviously for purchasing a primary residence in Nye County, and they would be required to live in the home in order to reap the benefit of the ARPA funding. That same savings, and this is a sample of a $345,000 mortgage, that 7% interest rate, they're looking at $4,800 in savings in just the first year. That's $400 of additional monthly income. Commissioner Leo Blundo, made the motion to amend and approve the $400,000 grant agreement, which passed with all in favor. Arviso noted that the NRHA will launch the program in the next few weeks. For more information, visit nvrural.org. Well, Shelley Poerio founded Living Free Health and Now Cafe to help those in addiction get the recovery they need. Last month, she hosted an art show fundraiser, raising money to help provide treatment, transitional housing, and discounted recovery programs. Basically hated myself. I was a homeless heroin junkie out in Vegas. I slept behind dumpsters. I slept by a mortuary in the bushes because that was a safe space because nobody was going to mess with me by the dead people. Um, I, the last place I lived in right before I moved out here uh, was an abandoned Kmart over on Lake Pecos and Eastern. And uh, I remember being super cold and uh, the only heat I had was, that I guess the gas was still on and um, I did not care about anything else except my next day. The stories that they, that they told, I think that it, this gave this gave the public an opportunity to hear really the kind of raw, real stories of addiction and then of recovery. And um, and I was right. <laughs> there were some tears, yeah. uh, tears of joy, and families just very, very proud of of their family members and also relieved, right? Because so many people are dying of overdoses that. Um, that that's a constant worry now. It doesn't matter what drug you're doing, you don't know what's in it, but we know fentanyl's everywhere. Yeah. So, um, so that hope for them to get well and stay well, I think was evident in what people were sharing tonight. I can't do this, I'm trying to change, you know? So I just gave them my spots and I said, I don't want it no more. You know, and then uh, nine days went by and I started withdrawing off of Suboxone. That's the worst withdrawal I've ever been through in my life. And I've done a lot of heroin and meth, you know what I mean? And uh, if it wasn't for the house and the people who live in there and the brotherhood, I would have left the relapse and I would be still on the streets right now. But they kept me there, they supported me, uh, basically kidnapped me, but whatever. You know what I mean? <laughs> they saved me when you leave so I stayed in the house, I went through that, and uh, man, this program, uh, Living Free has saved my life. Drug court knew about me and they had to set up for me and I was told that I was going to Living Free. And I was like, okay, cool, sober living, I don't even know what that is. I had no idea what any of this stuff was. I just knew rehab was for drug addicts and you know, jail was for criminals. I had no idea what any of it meant. Um, I was really confused, I was really lost, I was only 20 years old. Um, and I was like three, I'm 300 and something miles away from where I'm from and my family, so it's all by myself. This is something we want to do with the community. So we were fortunate this year to have art that my mom had donated, as we you know kind of discussed before. And next year we have um, we'll be having art from other people um, in that show that we do, or I should call it a fundraiser. I think we had about 26 pieces. We had some other ones too that were up for sale. I don't have the exact total, but I'm pretty sure we sold at least 20, probably 22 of maybe 30. So at our website, livingfreehealth.org, we have links to the cafe, links to the cafe menu, 
links on treatment, background on our treatment providers, our you know our clinicians, and we have a nice donate button right up there at the top of the page, <laughs> where you can either use your PayPal account or use your credit card or debit card. And most people okay. use their debit card or credit card. And if you wanted to mail us a check, you could do that as well. Just feel free to call the office at 775-505-1625. Or you can email Shelly, S-H-E-L-L-E-Y, at livingfreehealth.org. More news on the other side of this break. You're watching News 25, the most recognized and farthest reaching local news in Nye County. News 25, local news you can count on. This segment of News 25 is brought to you by Lisa Spahitz and Mike Plasmeyer at Country Financial Insurance. Auto, home, life, and commercial. 775-727-8920. Two local men who are active members of our community and well known for all they do were our latest recipients of the Andre Butch Harper Active Kindness Award. Dr. Tom Waters and myself presented these awards to a packed audience during the Living Free Health Art Show. We come before you because we have what we call the Act of Kindness Award. And we look around our community and we try to find the people that everybody is deserving. I don't want to take anything away from anybody. But there are some that we have overlooked for so many years that have done so much for so many in our community. And tonight, we want to recognize a person that has done, I mean, whenever we go anywhere to see anything that's going on, we see this individual. And tonight, I'd like to ask he to come up. Oh. And as soon as he gets up here, I'm going to turn this around so you can see exactly what we have. First, I want to shake his hand. Thank you, sir. This is the Andre, in, in memory of Andre Butch Harper, the Act of Kindness Award, presented to C. Skensi, Sensky, for years of dedication, fundraising, charity, and compassion. From the citizens, citizens of Prompt, Nevada, no act of kindness is ever wasted. And this is the award that we, that we will give him. But before we do that, before we do that, because when we see Ski, we also see Ron Gibson. So we want to ask Ron, where is Ron? Come on up. Ron didn't expect it. We know that. But he didn't expect it either. And this is the time we can get two for one. Two outstanding individuals. That's for Ron. This is for Steve. And we'll ask him to say You know, we start out, and yeah, we make mistakes. But it's not so bad about the mistakes we make. It's what we do in our lifetime to correct them. And you're not going to find a better example than Butch Harper. I had the honor of being the speaker for his celebration of life. I usually don't have a problem keeping my emotions to myself. That was the hardest event that I ever did that bothered me for a couple of days. So, Butch, <laughs> and um, I, that's all I can say other than thank you. I don't deserve this because we all, every single person in this room has an obligation to help out the community that you live in. Um, also, uh, uh, well, I want to say, uh, for more information on that Andre Butch Harper Act kind of awards, we do have a Facebook page that you can find out about all the recipients, and you can even nominate somebody for an Andre Butch Harper Act of Kindness Award. I want to thank uh, Dr. Tom Waters for participating and making sure that we keep Andre Butch Harper's uh, Act of Kindness Award alive and the Rotary Club for helping fund these awards as well. Andre Butch Harper was definitely a force to be reckoned with, and you will see uh, the whole speech about 
about what Ski Zensky had to say about him and what he did actually here in town. If you don't know who Butch Harper is, definitely an interesting story. Well, a Tonopah woman was arrested for allegedly taking items out of a vehicle. The Nye County Sheriff's Office have reported that they have arrested an individual by the name of Elaine Gaines for one count of burglary of a motor vehicle and one count of use and possession of drug paraphernalia. On November 7, 2022, a deputy was dispatched to the Mizpah Hotel in Tonopah for a report of an alleged auto burglary. Upon arrival, the victim said he was on his break at work when he went to his red 1999 Saturn and noticed he was missing four packs of cigarettes, a bottle of lotion, and some change he left in the console. After viewing camera footage, Footage for the parking lot, the deputy observed a female walk to the passenger door, open the door, and get into the passenger seat. He then observed the female in what he described as going through items in the passenger side, then switched to the driver's side and did the same thing. After contacting Elaine at the parking lot of a nearby gas station, the deputy placed her under arrest for burglary motor vehicle. During a body search, Elaine said she had a pipe used for smoking methamphetamine in her boot. Elaine was transported to the Tonopah Detention Center without further incident. After arriving at the detention facility, an inventory search of Elaine's purse revealed four packs of cigarettes. And as we head into our break, oh, here is a word from KPVM's owner, Vern Van Winkle. Stream KPVM TV today. Stream on any device. Using the Local BTV app, get the free streaming app from localbtv.com and stream KPVM TV 25. It's free, it's fast, it's easy. Do it now. You're watching News 25, brought to you by Mountain West Lawyer, Injury Attorneys, 727-9500. Also brought to you by Silver State Health. Visit silverstatehealth.org or call 702-471-0420 for an appointment. News 25, local news you can count on. Well, I know it's going around again because some of my family members are fighting this and the holidays are almost here. And many of us will be spending time with family, which could mean exposure to germs and viruses. The kids uh, um, could um, get sick and Dr. Adam Keating with Cleveland Clinic Children says, now is a good time to make sure children are up to date on routine vaccines. Our standard childhood immunizations do a good job of protecting kids against diseases, but particularly for our youngest ones, it's worth mentioning to family members um, that you're visiting to see if they're up to date on particularly their whooping cough or pertussis vaccine. Health experts predict a more significant flu season this year. Dr. Keaton says younger kids are at the highest risk. Children six months of age and older should get both the flu and COVID-19 vaccine. The CDC recommends the bivalent COVID-19 booster for children ages five and up. Dr. Keaton says infection prevention is about the basics. Cover your mouth, distance from family members with illness, and practice good hand hygiene. Making sure that we're using um, soap and water to wash hands or hand sanitizer that's available um, particularly before eating or any opportunity before you're touching your face, encouraging kids and adults um, to avoid touching their face and particularly what we call the T-zone across the eyes and down the nose um, and the mouth um, where we can get our respiratory illnesses. Well, if your child gets sick during the holidays, Dr. Keating suggests additional medical care if they develop a fever or have difficulty breathing. And if kids or family members are at an elevated risk of illness, consider masking to avoid transmission. News 25 Weather Cam is brought to you by Lerner and Rowe Injury Attorney's Office in Pahrump. In a wreck, need a check? Call 702-877-1500. Taking a look outside at what looked like a little earlier today. We're going to have your weather in just a moment. News 25 weather is brought to you by Dairy Council of Nevada. The splash of cream in your coffee, the dollop of sour cream on your burrito, the melted toasty cheese on your pizza. Undeniably delicious, undeniably dairy. Enjoy what's real. Happy Tuesday, good evening, Nevada. It's John Kohler from the KPVM Channel 25 Weather Studios, and what a beautiful fall weather map we have for you. 
whole lot of 40s and 50s, man. Tell you what, look at this Fernley, 46 degrees. Weather twins up in Fallon and Carson City at 44 and 14 for a low at night. My own identical weather twins. We saw Tonopah hit 40 degrees. You are uh, our cool spot award winner today. Congratulations, Goldfield at 42. Uh, Beatty up there sweating it at 55. Whew, how they sweat at 55. 59 in Amargosa, 56 in Las Vegas and uh, Death Valley. Perfect. 73 degrees. Not, it doesn't get any better than that. Here in the Paradise Sprump, let's take a look. It's 53 degrees. That's our current temperature. 59 was our high today. And that tied the hot spot award winner with Amargosa. Congratulations to all of us. Uh, sun rose this morning in all its glory. Hope and promise at 6.20 a.m. Setting this evening, 45 minutes ago. It's 4.35. And all hope for the day is gone. It's dark. What are you going to do? Heading down to Lodi at 36. I'm going to watch stars under the clear skies tonight and enjoy that northeasterly wind at 12 miles per hour as we head on into the week. What do you see? Bunch of clouds, bunch of sunshine, no rain. That's good. Winds under 10 miles per hour. Temperatures locked down pretty much on 60 degrees. Uh, a degree, a little less, a little couple degrees more. But basically, uh, that's kind of our, your weather week ahead. Looks like Saturday, Sunday is going to be some gorgeous uh, days. Uh, clear skies, temperatures up into the low 60s, high 50s. Not too bad. Something to look forward to. Make some plans and enjoy it. Uh, back to the desk. Here's Deanna. All right. Well, there is a couple events coming up. One is at the VFW, and uh, they wanted to make sure that everybody knew about this event that's happening there. We're going to show you that flyer right now. That is happening. Um, it is a, a poker run that's coming up soon, and uh, hopefully we'll get that up on the screen. Um, they are having it down there. Third annual poker run. It's um, going to be happening, and uh, let me see. Uh, Saturday, November 19th, um, that the VFW post 10054. You guys can find out about it by um, giving them a call. The pre-registration starts, giving them a call at 727-6072. And they are going to be uh, buying toys, and uh, that is going to be happening for our Christmas season at the VFW post right here on Homestead Road. And so um, give them a call, 727-6072, for more information that is happening this Saturday. Saturday down there at the VFW post and of course you don't have to have a bike you can have a car um, and uh, you can even carpool for that all right and that's gonna wrap up this edition of News 25 I'm Dan O'Donnell good night <laughs>